in the building. Amen. This is the day. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody shout hallelujah in the building. Oh yeah. Praise God for your presence. We thank you for streaming with us this morning. And if you catch us as, a, as it has already streamed and in the recording, we appreciate you watching it as well. But look, y'all looking good in your pink. That's, that's, that. see, see, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it again. So Sister Gilbert is, and Sister Wallace says, you too, Pastor. So y'all say thank you, then you say you too, Pastor. Y'all looking good in your pink. No, you know. You know how I do a little something. <laughs> but we thank God, uh, and we praise God for uh, Sister Mary. Did I get that right? Where did she go? Thank you so much. Anytime, watch this. The Bible says, and I, and I, and I, reason why we do testimonies is because the Bible says we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and words of what? Our testimonies. Amen. Testifying, someone testifies, that means open is, is placed in the atmosphere. Amen. So you got to know when you hear people talk about and, and, and you know you need some deliverance, you need something, or you better start receiving that testimony. Start receiving what you've been saying about God. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. So bless God. We praise God. Uh, we got some visitors that filled out the cards. If you didn't get the opportunity to fill out the card, uh, please do so. Uh, there should be one in the back of your seat. In the back. I think I'm going in and out on this mic. Am I? Uh, in the back of the seat. Amen. Amen. I think it's, yeah, let's see, let's see. That sound better? Praise the Lord. Sound man. Dick Gilson, man. Move that up, Pastor. Move that up. Amen. So fill it out. It's in the back of your seat. There should be a FC Connect card. Connect card. All right? So I want to recognize, is that something out now? Hey! What's up? <laughs> One of our, uh, Old member, he's back in California, and it's always an honor and pleasure to see you, Sister Maldonado. She's a faithful, hard-working servant of the Lord. So God bless you. Thank you for coming. So let me do this. Let's uh, let's do this. Everyone stand. I, I stand everyone. So when I call names and I ask that person to stand, that they won't look like everybody's just beaming in. So just wave your hand. Uh, wave your hand when I call your name, all right? So Robert L. Davis. Where you at, Robert L? Robert L, bless you, man. Thank you so much. Brother Davis, aren't, aren't, aren't you, you, you Brother Davis from, from the Bible study on the men's when we, that's you, right? Man, that's Brother Davis, brothers. So all y'all brothers, Brother Davis, wave your hand. I want y'all to show him some serious love because when we were streaming on Bible study, he was on there all the time. That's uh, Deacon Dickens' friend. Amen. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. You got your pink on my bag. You did tell me you'd be my brother Davis. I'm sorry. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much, brother Davis. Uh, also, uh, Trina Lewis. Trina Lewis. Trina Lewis. Trina Lewis in the house. She is a guest of Sister Meet Me, Michelin. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Uh, and then Brother Rodney Keaton, Brother Rodney Keaton and Brother Woods. And by Brother Keaton, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Fellowship, you know how we do it. Please, after service, do not allow them to walk to the parking lot, walk to their cars alone. Matter of fact, so many people bug them that they say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Y'all can leave me alone. Y'all can leave me alone. All right? So show them love. We thank you so much for coming. Again, if you're, if you're visiting for, with us for the first time, please fill out the information card, FPC Connect card, in the back of your seats. I praise God.
Uh, we are in a campaign called Campaign Restore. And I see that membership folk are taking ownership of this Campaign Restore. Because Campaign Restore started on the 18th of October and runs till I think January 25th. It's 100 days, 100 days, 100 days of membership stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what? I'm going to be part of the process of an individual giving their life to Christ. So leading one person to Christ in those hundred days, and then not only just leading one person to Christ in those hundred days, but also, and I'm going to keep talking about this, also lead someone that does not have a church to fellowship Christians in the church. And you can, I say this, and you heard me say this, you can take care of both of those challenges in one, one city. Amen. So continue. I was talking to a pastor uh, on Thursday uh, after the uh, MLK appreciation uh, meeting that we had, day meeting we had. And I was talking to a pastor and I was telling him about what we were doing. And I said, man, you know what? When I really sit down and think about it, because the Great Commission uh, commissions us and challenges us to win souls to Christ. Amen. Y'all may be seated. The visit already made. But it challenges us to win one soul to Christ. If you think about this, there's 364 days in a year, right? 100 days as a believer, a representative of the kingdom of God. If I can't lead one person to Jesus in 100 days, then something is really wrong with my Christianity. Nobody said amen. When we get to heaven, part of what we're judged for is where you win souls to Christ. Not just how you were living, but were you willing to to Christ? So we're challenging ourselves in this 100 days, 100 days. Every week I'll give a countdown toward the end of the week. Win one soul. And I want you to take this. I want you to pray that God send somebody your way every day that does not have a relationship with Christ so you can witness to them. And not only that, that when people are watching you, that you are a witness in your life and the way you live. Amen which will be the biggest witness that anyone could do. Is that all right? Y'all think that's good? Y'all think, think that's something God will really be pleased with? Amen, amen. So, uh, before we start, we are in our series, Limitless. This is, uh, we have one more after this Sunday. I'm probably going to do something a little special next Sunday, and I don't want you to miss this. I'm not going to unveil it. The last one we'll probably do the first Sunday in November. Uh, so the fifth Sunday is next Sunday. Got something special that uh, I want to do uh, in relation to this limited series. So just keep that in mind. Please invite folk. I want you to see this. Uh, I want you to hear some other people as well. Alright. So in light of that we are excited about what God is doing heard Kid Bone, you heard the Hype Ministry, which is the student ministry. They're in the back in the fellowship hall now. All the middle schoolers and high schoolers are in the back uh, in the fellowship hall doing worship service. Uh, you heard about all those different things that are transpiring. You heard the life group. You heard our young adults up here, Michelin and Wayne Jr. up here discussing their life group. Amen. Uh, so the leaders of that life group. Michelin, single lady, and I have Wayne Jr. and Bree, my daughter-in-law and my son, that are working together to lead uh, that life group as well. So I'm excited about that 21-year-old to 36-year-old age bracket. So we want you to be uh, uh, engaged in that, doing life together, and like doing life together. We have some other ones uh, for married couples, also the older, older singles. Uh, we have those life groups as well. So we want everyone in the, in the ministry to be part of a life group doing life together. There's nothing like that bond and, and iron chopping and iron in the name of Jesus. All right? Good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Let's do this. Uh, 
empieza a cambiar. Turn your Bibles, open up your Bibles real quick. Second Chronicles, 20th chapter. Second Chronicles, 20th chapter. I'm going to stand. Go ahead and stand. Amen. Second Chronicles, 20th chapter. Uh, Reverend Lamy, I'm going to ask you a question. I got this little Bible. Where's my Bible from last week and the week before? Did you put it in the bag, man? <laughs> I was looking for my Bible, y'all, this morning. <laughs> it gets smaller and smaller every week. <laughs> All right. Y'all got the second chronicles, 20th chapter. So for the sake of time, this is what we're going to do. Is that I'm not going to read all of our, our feature scriptures. You'll see them up there on the board. Go ahead and put them up for me. Second Chronicles 20th chapter. Uh, let's do we're going to read. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll jump. Uh, go up, and then I'm going to explain this text to you if you're not familiar. It, it's actually one of my favorite stories in the Bible, one of my favorite uh, stories about the power of God, the faith of God people, just the trust of, of people, and just God going above and beyond what we can imagine or think. It's a great story. So let's look at verse 15, of course. Let's start. Let's start at verse 15, and I'll jump around. Here we go. You got it? Everybody good? Let me do my, my lift up your Bible, whatever you have. Your Bible on. Repeat this after me. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I am what it says. I can do what it says. I confess power, prosperity, position. Favor, fruitfulness, overflow will follow me all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, be it done, it is done unto me. Somebody shout hallelujah in this building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sound like y'all want to worship today. Get your praise on. Like you came in for a purpose. A purpose. Okay. So, so the New Living Translation is this. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Joseph. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Y'all catch that? The battle is not yours, but God's. Do we have that? We don't have that. We don't. The battle is not yours, but God's. Check this out. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But, watch this. That's, this, this is the beauty of this text. But you will not even need to fight. And I'll explain this on. Take your position. Somebody say, take your position. And then it says, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. You're going to hear me read this again. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Jump down to verse 21. 
21, jump down to 21. It says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they're saying. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithfulness, love endures forever. 22 says, at the very moment they begin to sing and give praise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Lord calls the armies of Amon, Moab, Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. So we're in the series Limitless, in the series Limitless. The first sermon, we talked about the limitlessness of God, the unlimited God to set the foundation. The second sermon, we talked about love because we have to talk about the love. When we talk about limitless, we got to talk about the love of God through Jesus Christ to set that foundation. We talked about, and if you notice, the first sermons dealt with the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We talked about power, 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 amen? And this, son, this sermon, we're going to talk about faith, limitless faith. So if you notice, the text says, take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's Victory, says Maldonado. Stand still, says the warrior, and watch the Lord's victory, says Michelle. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory, by Sean Johnson. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory, brother Elliot. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory, brother Mason. Stand still, says the McLaurin. Stand still and watch the Lord. morning we're gonna we're gonna come from the subject come from the subject come from the subject take your faith position take your faith position turn to someone turn to someone turn to someone you didn't come here with this morning you didn't wake up with this morning amen I had to change that that changed that. Y'all may not have drove in the same car, but y'all woke up together. Go, go to somebody that really is not in your household. On the count of three, I want you to tell them with some enthusiasm. Tell them with some enthusiasm. Remember what we say all the time. There's, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Amen. I want you to tell them with some enthusiasm. Tell them it's when, when I say three, I'm just telling you now what to say. Don't say it yet, all right? When I say three, I want you to say, it's time to take your faith position. You let them know, all right? Let them know like you know they're going through. Let them know like you know, that like, like, like you think you know, amen, amen, that they are dependent on God right now. They need something to happen in their life right now, all right? So when I say three, I want you to say, it's time. It's time to take your faith position. You got me? Here we go. One, two, three. All right, all right, all right. Some of y'all did good, but watch this. I seen somebody, she was looking at a couple of people with attitudes as a bachelor. And I, I want you to tell them, watch this, listen to me. I, I want you to tell them like the devil is standing right next to them and you need to hear the same thing that God is telling them right now. You hear me? You got me? You got me? Matter of fact, you're not really talking to them. You're talking to the devil, so he'll know what they're about to do. You hear me? This is real talk, y'all. I'm going to share something. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? One, two, three. It's time to take your fist pump, fist pump, fist pump, fist pump, touch and agree. Take your seat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so remember, remember, we talk about love, power, faith, last one will be wisdom, but today we're going to deal with faith. For, for believers, check this out, for believers, faith is not some illogical blind acceptance, nor is it some flimsy, insubstantial hope. Instead, as true believers, 
Your faith is built on certainty. As true believers, your faith is built on assurance. Uh, not insurance, but assurance. Assurance, a firm, solid confidence in the object of your faith. Huh. The Apostle Paul says it best, the epistle to the Hebrews, as he describes this aspect of faith in this frequently quoted scripture. And you know what it is. Now, faith is the substance. In other words, it says faith is the assurance of things hoped for. So when, in other words, it says when you're hoping, you know that it's going to happen. And it's the evidence, the evidence, meaning, meaning the conviction of things not seen. Somebody say, take your faith position. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. Please hear me good on this. Living a life of faith does not mean you will never have questions about God and God's ways. While faith is reasonable and logical, questions will still arise in many areas of the life of believers. Anybody, anybody can attest to that? You still, sometimes you're like, well, God? For instance, you, you, you don't know and can't see what the future holds. You don't know and you can't see what the future holds. You don't know nor understand why God allows certain circumstances into your life or allow certain crazy people. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't have to say amen if you're the crazy person, but allow certain crazy people into your life. And from time to time, watch this, from time to time, you still struggle you still struggle to comprehend important truths about the ways and nature of God. Who is oftentimes incomprehensible. However, regardless of the question fact, you must still trust God with both the understandable and the incomprehensible. Somebody say amen. Take your faith position. This is why the Bible teaches, here's another favorite scripture, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, until you get to heaven or until Jesus returns, your job as a believer is to walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11 and 6, another familiar uh, scripture, teaches, without faith, look how important it is, without faith is what? It's impossible. I don't, I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much money you give. I don't care how you serve. It's all about faith and pleasing God. Ooh, somebody say take your faith position. That's why this is important. In other words, what both of those texts are saying to you is faith in God through Christ Jesus is the driving force and guiding force in every aspect of your life. Let me say it again. Check this out, Courtney. Faith in God through Jesus Christ is the driving force and the guiding force in every aspect of your life. Let me see, can I simplify that? So, so if you think I need to go that way, but because of my relationship with God and my faith in God, God says don't go that way. Guess what? I don't go that way. Well, it, it, it drives me into a direction that God wants me to go. Because if I rely on myself, because that way looks appealing. That way has everything that I'm dreaming of. That way, ah. Uh, uh-huh, she fine. She look good. He fine. He look good. But God says, you dare not go that way. Because you don't see what I see. And I know. Well, watch this. You don't see the traps. Oh, yo, 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 what's your boy? So watch this, watch this, watch this. So faith says, although it looks like 
It's all right. I got to trust God because God knows best. And run, run, run. Somebody say, take your faith position. See, this is what our featured text of the day is all about. The story of King Jehoshaphat in our text shows us how to take our faith position in times when life challenges us. How not to have confidence in ourselves, but total confidence in a limitless God. Notice that, limitless God. I got all kinds, we talked about this last, we have all kinds, tell your neighbor, you got all kinds of flaws, you got all kinds of issues, I don't care how much you think you got it together, you got some jacked up stuff in your life, in your mind, in your heart, you got jacked up, and the only reason why, and the only reason why it's good right now is because you are believing in God and you're walking in Christ, because all of... So no, don't, 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 don't ever think, don't ever think that it's, it's, it's you. Check this out. Even in the midst of King Jehoshaphat's character flaw of making a horrible decision and going into an alliance with a godless King Ahab, he was still a man who followed God and brought spiritual reform to the nation of Israel in the chapter be before. So if you go to chapter 19, the second Chronicles, around the fourth verse, it tells you what King Jehoshaphat does about bringing the nation back to God. Although he, had, he made a bad decision to hook up with his boy King Ahab, create alliance with King. All of us make bad decisions. But guess what trumps bad decisions? Faith in God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. See, here we are now in the text. The king was, was shaking all up one morning when his intelligent sources came running in with horrifying news, not fake news, but reliable news, saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea out of Edom. And behold, they are not far away. They're not far away. He says, watch this. This meant that the enemy coalition was about 15 miles south of Jerusalem. I'm trying to paint this picture because I want you to understand how drastic this is right now. This king gets this information. You got armies, three armies together coming to destroy Jerusalem. Watch this. Now remember, remember, this is the same thing, a chapter before, that has now brought the people back to God. Watch this. Jehoshaphat's life and his entire kingdom were on the brink right now of extinction if he did not do something. Now, if you talk about a reason to be horrified, a reason to be discouraged, my God, how in the world? I, I thought I was doing the right thing, God. I, 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 bringing the nation back to you. I was thought I was doing the right thing, God. It changed my life, but God saved me. Getting things together. This, this horrible, horrible news is getting ready to take us out. King Jay did what he does best. Being the God-fearing king he was, he called a national prayer meeting. If you read the text, that's what he was doing in this text. And encouraged the people to in God, trust God wholeheartedly in the face of this overwhelming crisis. Reverend Deb, in other words, King Jay challenged his people as God-fearing, worshiping people to take their faith position and trust that God would see them through only like God can. And that's all I'm doing this morning is challenge you to take your faith position, trust God in your life. If you're going through something right now, trust them. 
If you're not going through something, you just came out of something, trust him. If you're just chilling and everything is kind of good, don't worry about it because you're about to go through something. Trust him and allow God to do exactly what God does best. Oh, yeah. So remember, remember, as we get to these, these little couple things I, I got to give to you real quick. Remember this whole series I give, I give two, two sermon observations that kind of uh, is the foundation uh, of the series. And those observations... I give them every Sunday, are these. Your potentials are limitless because you serve a limitless God through Christ Jesus. So your potentials are limitless because you serve a limitless God through Christ Jesus. So no matter what you have or you don't have, guess what? You have some great potentials in God through Jesus Christ. And they are limitless because of God through Jesus Christ. And then the second thing, Christ, Christ's glorious power works in you mightily to achieve results that are beyond human ability and comprehension. So there's some stuff in you, there's some stuff in you that God has placed in you, in him through Jesus Christ, that will blow people's mind of what God has done and is doing in your life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I attached the scripture last Sunday with it, Ephesians 3 and 20. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. The magnitude the exegesis of that text says this, you can't even think of the things that God can do for you. Your wildest dreams, just think of something that you say, man, this is, ain't no way in the world and God can do that and more. Y'all catch that? That's what that scripture means. Here we go. Let's do this real quick. Check this out. So the first thing that I'm going to give you is something that we have to really get in our spirit and understand and get a, get a great perspective of this. Then the last two things I'm going to give you is what we really need to do. What we really need to do in taking our faith position. So the first thing, again, I'm going to tell you, look, you got to get this in your spirit. You got to know this. You got to understand this. All right? And the last two things is what you need to do to really solidify taking your faith position. Y'all catch that? So I need you to pay close attention. Pay close attention to this, because this limitless piece on faith is something, again, that is major in your life. Because the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. I'm getting ready to tell you, get ready to give you a secret, based on this text. And all I've done is say, Holy Spirit, in the text, you, you lay this text on my heart, and I'm seeing this. What is the king really doing? What is he? I mean, because this dude is like unshaken. So let, let me see what he's doing. Okay, here we go. Check this out. So if you look at verse 16 and 17, it says, Tomorrow march out against them. You will find them coming up to the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. Watch this. But you will not even need to fight. It says, here's the important part. It says, take your position then stand still and watch the victory of the Lord. And then if you jump down, it says, do not be afraid or discouraged. So take your position. Stand still. A lot of stuff going to be going around. around. <laughs> Just stand still. He says, don't be afraid and discouraged. He said, don't be afraid and discouraged. You're going to see some things, or Satan is going to try to play a little trick in your mind, make you discouraged or afraid. But don't do it. Just take your position. Stand firm. Don't be discouraged or afraid. Hmm. Watch this. The first thing. Check this out. And when it shows up there, and if you're streaming with us, uh, I want you to take a picture of that. When it shows up here, I need you to take a picture of it. There's about three slides on this one. The first thing says this. First thing you must know as you take your faith position, as you take your faith position, first thing you may know is your positioning slash posture is paramount. Y'all got that? I'm going to explain this to you. Your position posture is paramount. Oh, there they go again. They showed up last week. I think, I think uh, Zach and, and Zeke showed up last week. They were handing the ball. And now the offensive line is positioned properly. Oh, 
Okay, that's good. Let me see the next slide. That's good. That's good. That's all right. I just want to show that. that this is the real one, right? My bad. I just got excited. I got excited on the slide. Check this out. Your positioning and posture is paramount. You see those three words? We're coming to those. Watch this. Check this out. Understand this, what I'm saying? Look at the text. He says, he says, take your position. Stand firm. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Everything he just said has everything to do with your physical, your spiritual, and your mental. You got to understand this. When you position yourself, well, guess what we say? We say, take your faith position. In order to take your faith position, you got to position, posture is extremely important, and we're talking about from a physical, spiritual, and mental perspective. That, that's, what the, that's what the children of Israel have to deal with in the text. Physically, spiritually, they got to believe what he says, and mentally, they can't get discouraged. So anytime you deal with position of faith, you have to understand faith is not just saying, okay, I believe, but it's also, if you believe, there's a physical aspect, there's a spiritual aspect, and there's a mental aspect. Oh boy, y'all better catch this. Paramount means more important than anything else in your life. Means most supreme. So your positioning and your posture as you take your faith position is more important than anything else you can do. That's why King Jehoshaphat comes to the children of Israel and says this statement first. Look, this is what I need you to do. Take your position. Stand firm because you're going to see some things. It, it's, it's not, and watch this, the, what you see is not always what it is. And the majority of the time when you're dealing with God, what you see is never what it really is. Oh boy, I hope I... Whoa, whoa. So he's saying, look, just because you're standing, <laughs> just because you're in position, you're standing still, and, and, and watch this, you're hearing things, and, and, and other folk are, are murmuring, watch this, it's not just for uh, uh, the group, but it's for the individual, because you know, like I know, that there are some believers that may not believe like you that are in your circle, and they're murmuring, they're doing some things and saying some things that will sidetrack your faith That's why he said, don't get discouraged. I don't care what goes on around you, what you hear, don't get discouraged. This is, this is important. You got to catch this. Right, watch this. So, so it, it, it's really the most important thing you got to understand. I'm not just dealing with my belief. I'm also dealing with my, 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 my watch this, my physical. Huh. My mental and my spiritual. And I always like to say, it's your physical first because you got to get there. And then it's your spiritual, watch this, that holds the physical and the mental together. Oh, I hope y'all catch that. So, 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 if you don't feel like coming to church in the morning, or you're like, man, I got a bad morning, I don't feel like going again. You just need to get there. Your spirit says, just get there. Because when you get there, oh, the anointing, oh boy, y'all better catch me. The anointing is going to do something for you spiritually and will affect your mental stability. Because before you walked in the door and the anointing hit you, you were discouraged. But your physical said you got to get there and you came in here. Then all of a sudden, I wish I had some people that understand what I'm saying. When you got in here, oh boy, the anointing starts to saturate the atmosphere. And now you start to feel encouraged because somebody sung a song that says God will never leave you nor forsake you. Then that attacks to your spirit and you start believing exactly and remembering what God has done for you in the past. And it just shifted. Does that, that make sense? Watch this. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. Huh, huh. Go to the next slide. Go to the next. Go to the next banner. Go to the next. Watch this. Check this out. These are the three things that positioning and posture has to, has to be cognizant of. Oh, uh, well, well, has to do. You gotta make yourself available. You gotta be aware. You gotta be authentic. Y'all better catch this. I'm telling you. You better get this. You better hear this good. 
You got to be available, able to be used or obtained. Hmm. How, 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 how in the world do we expect God to do the miracles when we're not available? You got to be available physically, you have to be available spiritually, and you have to be available mentally. Well, look, look at the last part. Able to, when, when I seen this, I said, man, I, I need to highlight that one. Able to be used or, or obtained at someone's disposal. Hmm. You can't worry about what's going around. God is positioned. He says, I already won the battle, King Jehoshaphat. Just tell the folk this is what they need to do. Just get available because two, three, four, thousand, three thousand years from now, two thousand and some change from now, uh, 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 on, on October the 24th uh, at 10 a.m. at Fellowship Christian Center Church, 1609 14th Street, I got a group of people that need to reflect back on my power. Watch this. Oh, so you got to make yourself available. Someone's disposal. God's disposal. That's why you heard the old church and the old deacons and the old preachers and the old members and the sisters. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me all up. You can't use me anymore. I'm at your disposal. Hmm. Then it says aware, having knowledge or discernment of something, attentive and well-informed, vigilant, watchful. Huh, watch this. This is what you got in position. You got to be aware. No, notice, having knowledge or discernment. King Joseph had discernment that God was speaking and God said, do this very thing. In your faith walk, if you make yourself available, guess what? then God can pour the things and the discernment and the knowledge into you, oh boy, that will take you to a different level that when you have faced obstacles in your life that seem impossible to climb, you already are aware that God can and God will. Why? Because he's given you some knowledge. That's why the Bible says, my people perish from a lack of food. Lack of food? Huh? Lack of money? A lack of knowledge. Oh boy. And then authentic. You got to be genuine. You got to be real. You got to be true. Not fake. You got to be true to this. This has to be, y'all know my slogan. Y'all know my slogan. Finish it off for me. It has to be, it can't be a profile. It must be what? People shouldn't look at you and say you go to church. They should be able to look at you and say, you love the Lord. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all talk to your boy. That shouldn't say, now look, your definition of you shouldn't be, I go to church. I'm active in the church. No, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. The old school said, in pity, long as I live. In, oh, I got some old school church folk in here. Some of y'all looking at me like, what is he talking about? In trouble rise, what, what's the song say? I will hasten through the dawn. That's a faith move right there. That's a faith move. That's a faith power move. When trouble rise, I will run, hasten to the throne of God because I know that's where my help is. So you got to be real. You got to be, be genuine. You got to be true to it. Can't be fake with it. Can't straddle the fence with it. Somebody say, preach, doc, preach, 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 preach. So, so again, here we go. Taking your faith position, your posture, your po position slash posture is paramount. Got, got to understand, it's the most important thing you can do because it's dealing with your physical, your spiritual, and your mental. And you have to be available aware and authentic. You have to be available. You can't say, God, you know, I'll fit you in when I get you in. Y'all do realize a lot of Christians live like that. They get up in the morning, and it's so easy to do. Get up in the morning, and the first thing on their mind is not devotion with God. <laughs> it's, it's rushing. 
is doing this because I, I laid in the bed too long and now I got to get up and I'm rushing, I ain't thinking. So I get in the car and I just throw a little prayer together in the car. But you want God to save your nation. All right, that's another sermon. Here we go. Check this out. Next text. Watch this. Watch this. Now, these are the two things you got to do. Let's run through this real quick. Two things you got to do. Here we go. Two things you got to do. Here they are. Text says this. Early next morning, the army of Judah went, verse 20, into the wilderness of Tekoa. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Give me five minutes. On the way, Joseph had stopped and said, this is what he said. As they, the next morning, all right, let's do our thing. He says, listen to me. All you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm, believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Believe, believe, believe. It has not happened yet. God has not delivered it yet. But you got to believe. You got to believe it to the point King Jehoshaphat says, and what he does, he starts to speak it. He's not just speaking it to himself because he believes it that much that he has to speak it to the other folk to help them to believe. So the, 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 the first of the two do's, this right here, you got to do this. You must decree it to be. Hey, look, you better take a picture of these next two. You must decree it to be. Decree it to be. Let me give you this real quick. Let me give you this real quick. Uh, 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 decree is defined as a formal. Order. Of authority. A mandate proclamation. A command. An official order. Issued by legal authority. So, so when I say decree, you got to be, you got to be legally able to decree it. In other words, what I'm saying, you have to be spiritually able to decree it. Oh boy, boy, y'all better catch this. Other definitions include the state of emphatically, to show, reveal, manifest, and to declare one's position in a controversy. You know we're always in a battle with Satan. We're always in a controversy with Satan. So we have to decree, uh, uh, watch it, show our position. And the beauty about this, we are not decreeing something that God has not already spoken. When we say God is a God that cannot and will not lie, if God says I will never leave you nor forsake you, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the situation looks like. I don't care what the situation feels like. I don't care how dim, how dark it looks. He says I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you all the way in and you put yourself in it and you get and you say, God, please forgive me. I need you to work this out. I'm going to get this right. I'm, 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 I'm trusting you. Guess what? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As long as you have breath in your body, as long as you have a mouth and a mind to think, you can decree it to be. Oh, boy, y'all better catch this. Job 22 and 28 says, Thou shalt also decree a thing. This is what the scripture says. A thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Oh, many of us read this passage without understanding the power and what this word from God truly means. Catch this. Any person who makes a decree must be in a position of power and authority. Remember why I said that? Guess what you just did? You just positioned yourself, postured yourself in the right position because you're making yourself available, you're aware, and you're authentic. Yeah, you got some flaws. Yeah, you make some bad decisions. But God says, I will work this out of you. I will work you through this. So you have positioned yourself, watch this, to decree certain things in your life that you're coming up against to tell the devil, you cannot have my family, you cannot have my finances, you cannot have my future, you cannot have my faith. You, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So just know, as you position yourself in God through Jesus Christ, the scriptures, one of my favorite, no weapons formed against you shall prosper. Check this out. Just as God spoke everything into existence, we as his children have the power or weapon 
and our words decree and to declare what God has already promised and expect the results. That's why it's important. Get your mental right. Oh boy, you better listen to me. Your mental right. And I'm just, I'm just an advocate of Jesus Christ when the Bible says, let this mind be in me. That's also in Christ. So, so whatever Christ thought, however he thought, whatever he did, that's the way I need to think because that's how I get my mental right. Because there are going to be times when you're all alone after you have decreed it, after you have shouted on Sunday morning, after you have praised him. But, but Tuesday evening, Thursday evening, when that thing is still lingering around. <laughs> That's why it's important to have your mental right in God through Jesus Christ. Because Satan attacks the mind. Satan starts to talk to you because your, your flesh is connected to the enemy. And he starts to say to you, see, I told you wasn't none of that stuff true, wasn't none of that going to happen. Look, they still acting the fool, they still doing this, they still doing that, this is happening. I told you, this don't, don't even worry about that. Why are you even doing that? Da, 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 da. And now you have gotten into a place of depression in a state where your mental now is affected and you have moved yourself out of the correct posture and position. Now, watch this, your faith cannot please God. And now God is waiting for you to stay back like Jehoshaphat said. Get in position, stand firm, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. Tell the devil he's a liar. Check this out. The last thing. I need somebody to catch this. I need somebody to catch it. So I'm behind my laptop this morning, and I'm kind of going over this sermon, trying to tap it, touch it up a little bit, and I get to this last point. I get to this last point. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my cell phone rings, and I'm looking at my cell phone. It rings, and it's about, eh, I think it's about 7. I was up about 5-something. It's about 7, 7.30. My cell phone rings. And then I'm like, who is this? And I look down, and it's a brother that I've been checking on that called me. And I said, okay, he's going to call me, tell me how he's doing. Uh, 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 but I got to finish this, so let me answer the phone. Normally, I would not answer the phone, but I answered the phone because normally I'm going over, like I said, and that, that happens, and I don't answer the phone. But I answered the phone. He said, hey, Dr. Stafford, how are you doing? And he's in the hospital. I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I am, I'm in here. And he's talking to the nurse in the background. Well, can you unhook this? Can you do this? Can you do this, 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 and this? And, and I'm just waiting. I'm on the laptop. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I mean, let me think. While well, he's, he's taking care of his business, let me read this, this, this. And then he comes back. He said, Doc, you're in the Limitless uh, series. And, uh, 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 you know, I, I was teaching Sunday school and online. And uh, this came across uh, the lesson. Hold that thought right there. Y'all with me right there? I'm going to pick back up. Check this out. Look at the text. So that's decreed it to be. So the text says, watch what the text says. It says, then King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, after he told the people, stand firm, it says he bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same thing, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohatites and Korites stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Then if you jump down to 21, before, before they really put the stuff together, this is what they said, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk around ahead of the army singing the Lord, praising, praising, somebody say praising, praising, praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang, give thanks to the Lord. Notice they're singing before anything really happens. Give thanks to the Lord. They're thanking God before anything really happens. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your faith is dependent upon how you react as well. Oh boy, you better catch this. They are singing before anything and giving God thanks and praise before anything happens. It says, his faithful love endures forever. They're saying that God loves me. His love endures forever. It does not look like they're in a loving situation because here comes an army that's about to devour them, but their faith Faith tells their mental that God still loves you because he's about to take care of you. Y'all catch that? Then at the very moment, he began to sing and, 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 and to give praise. 
Watch, watch what happened. This is the most powerful piece here. This is the most powerful piece that they begin to give praise. The Lord calls the armies of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. So the enemy starts to fight among themselves. They were not focus on the children of Israel but they start to fight among themselves who would have ever thought that situation would turn around like that but people of faith because Jehoshaphat said stand in position stand firm but 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 not only stand firm but just believe that God can do it decree it believe it in your heart and mind then after that I need you to watch this not just decree it to be but also praise it to be I wish I had some people in the building right now somebody need to hear me. Somebody needs to hear me. So watch this. I go back to the brother. I go back to the brother. Now I'm in the sermon and I'm going through it and I'm right when he calls me. I'm right at this point. That's why somebody needs to hear it. God, God is getting ready. God's getting ready to do something for someone right now. Somebody is about to break some chains. Somebody is about, watch this, somebody is about to be delivered. Somebody is about to see God in a whole different life. So the brother calls and he says, he says, Doc, you're doing this limited. Uh, uh, I got this Sunday school and, 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 and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. What, what you got there? What you got? And I'm still not really paying attention that much because I'm listening to him because I got to finish this and go over this and get it in my spirit, Brother Johnson. So he says, look, I want you to read this text in, the, in, in, in Psalms 84 when it talks about the praises of God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Y'all not catching this. Guess what it says? Praise it to be. Notice, I am in on the point that he is calling me about. This doesn't happen to me at early in the morning. Folks don't call me early in the morning. God shows me this and he says, somebody give me a hand mic. He says, he says this, he says this. Let the people know that somebody is about to get delivered. Something is about to happen in somebody's life this morning. Well, what's this? Check it out, check it out, check it out. I said, man, guess what? Guess what I'm going over right now? I'm going over my statement, and I'm going on faith. And guess what the last point is? Decree it to be. I told him all the points. Then I told him the last point. I said, decree it to be. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Starts to talk. And he says, oh, man, that's good. He said, I'll tell you where I got that from. He says, I got it from... He says, I got it from in the lesson. It talks about, it talks about Korah. Oh boy, y'all not saying anything. Y'all didn't even hear what I said in the text. He says it's talking about Korah. I said, guess what, man? Guess what text that God has gave me to use for that? If you read down around the 21 and 22 and around that area, it says that the Le and, and this is what he said. He said it talks about Korah. You know, Korah was a Levite. I said, man, guess what the text says here? The text says the after after Jehoshaphat does what he does, he says the clan the, the clan from the Levites. Oh boy, Korah. Oh, y'all not hearing me. So what are you saying, Dr. Staff? This is what I'm saying right here. That stuff doesn't happen for a coincidence. That stuff happens because God is confirming exactly what the word is going for. So I'm saying to you right now, if I'm talking to you and you know you're going through something right now, you're going through something right now, and you expect God to do something powerful, or you need God to do something powerful, I need you to stand on your feet right now. Because God is about to change it. God is about to shift it. God is about to deliver it. God is about to do something that's going to blow your mine but what what what's this what's this what's this keep it keep it we coming we coming we coming hold on watch this watch this but the issue is watch this lady tasha as i sat there in the seat tasha as i sat there in the seat i said oh god i feel the holy spirit right now god is speaking god is speaking as i sat there in the in the seat the holy spirit says to me says dr stafford the piece that you are really missing you 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 got some stuff but the piece you are really missing personally for your life is yeah you pray every morning god help me to thank you all day long holy spirit help me but god says god says this i need you to go into a posture in a position of real praise watch this watch this notice what the text says the text says the people shouted and got loud and praised 
So I say this all the time. I say if we get excited about other things, sports and all that, and we better get excited three times more about God. So when you're going through your situation, I'm giving you the remedy right now. First, you got to decree it to be. Decree it to be. Make sure you're in the right position and posture. Then you start speaking what God has already spoken. If he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, you better start speaking it. If he says, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you better start speaking it. You better start speaking it. If he says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, you better start speaking it. Watch this, watch this. So, so, so he says, look, this is what you need to start doing, Stabber. He said, man, I need you to take your praise up. So right then, that very instant, I was so excited. I said, bro, I said, brother Bill, I got to get off the phone. I got to get off the phone, man. I got to say bye to you right now because God is speaking to me and I can't talk about it right now. I got to get this so I can get this word. And I said, I said, look, when I hung up the phone, I just pushed my chair back. And I said, devil, you are a liar. Oh boy, I hope you hope you're catching this. God, whatever you have for me, I decree it to be. I wish I had some believers. I wish I had some folk that can get with me right now. If you can get with me, you just get in the aisle, get somewhere. I don't care. You block the camera, get somewhere. If you know you need to go through, you need to uh, praise him, just get in the aisle, get you some position. I'm telling you, some of y'all ain't even moving. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying? If I'm talking to you and you need a deliverance, you need God to do something, I need you to position yourself somewhere in the aisle, get away from some other folk, because we get ready to get our praise on. We getting ready to get our praise on. I need a few folk up here. Some of y'all don't. Y'all ain't got problems. Y'all don't believe what I'm saying? If you know that you're looking for God to do something, get your stuff up right now, and let's get our praise on. Hold on, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yo, position yourself. Position yourself. See, we can ask God, God, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And I thank you in advance for that. But God says, watch this. You got to act like it already happened. I wish I had some folk. You got to act like it already do I got any act like it already happened, folk in the building? Now watch this. Y'all get ready. Y'all get ready. Check this out. Check this out. I want you to think about that thing you've been praying for. If it's your children, if it's your finances, if it's your health, you're interceding for someone, if it's a job, if it's your singleness, your loneliness, whatever it is, your marriage, whatever it is, I need you to put that on your mind right now. Decree right now. Decree. God, I give it to you and I decree. Somebody decree right now. I decree that it is finished. It's fixed. It's delivered. It is done. It is done. It is done. You go ahead and decree it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. On the count of three, if you just decree something, I want you to give God some crazy praise. I want you to give God some radical praise. I want you to give God some crazy things. I want you to give God some radical things. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Here we go. One. Oh, you should be warming up right now. You should be warming up right now. Two. You should. Hands should be in the air already by this time. When I say three, I want you to just begin to praise him in your own way. Three. Give him some praise. Give him some radical praise. God, we love you. I thank you, Lord. I worship you. I give you all the honor. All the glory. Be it done. It is done. Say yeah. Oh, give us a praise. Some of y'all cute with it. Some of you are cute with it. Give us a praise. Give us a praise. God, I bless you. I bless your name, God. 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 I'm done. Listen, right where you are, real song. Right where you are. Right where you are. Tell yourself, I'm expecting. 
a miracle. I'm expecting a breakthrough. I'm expecting deliverance. I'm expecting a new job. I'm expecting my marriage to be healed. I'm expecting my children huh, to be saved. I'm expecting my husband to be saved. I'm expecting my wife to be saved. Oh, bless his name. Eternal God, we thank you right now. We praise, magnify your name, God. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer. If you're here today, and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're streaming with us or if you watch this as a recording, we want to offer Christ to you right now. We want you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the first thing you need to do to take your faith position. Doesn't matter what's happening in your life, no matter where you are, you can never get right to get saved. So if that's you, if you're in here worshiping with us, if you're streaming or you watch this and recording, I want you to repeat these words after me. Confession of faith. If you want to be saved, you want to give Christ your life. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe, God, that you raised him from the dead. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. And today, God, I accept Jesus in my life, in my heart, as my Lord and my Savior. I speak right now, God, that I'm covered by the blood of Christ. I decree and declare today that I am saved. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me. In Jesus' name. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah in this place. <laughs> Shout hallelujah for those that gave their life to Christ. Those that are going to watch and give their life to Christ. Now the next thing is for you to connect with a ministry. Where you can work on your soul salvation. Please. Wherever you are. Find a ministry. And if you're in this location, you're in this area. You're visiting. We want you to be part of Fellowship Christian Center Church. Let me say that again. Thank you, Deke, for clapping. I need every member in here to clap when I say that. We want you to be part of Fellowship Christian Center Church. I don't think there's a greater place this side of heaven because it's, it's, it's our church. And I'm hoping other churches are saying that about their church and God through Jesus Christ. So if that's you, we give way. Uh, if you're in the building you can come up on this side if you're on that side you can come up on this side and we'll make sure you got a FTC connect card if you're in, in the building if you don't want to do that you can wait to after service fill out your card make sure you say member and turn it in somebody from the new members committee will contact you I promise you they will so if I'm speaking to you and you want to acknowledge and do it now please come Please come now if you want to do it now. Or you can fill out the FTC Connect card. Take it to the Connect Center. In the name of Jesus. If you're streaming with us, there should be a link that you can click and you can fill out that information as well. Someone from the new members committee will contact you. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God in the building. God bless you. I want you to be encouraged the rest of the week and know that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's.
Y'all catch me? I preached a sermon a long time ago. It's a fixed fight. The fight is fixed. It was fixed on Calvary. Long time ago. You are a guaranteed winner in the name of Jesus. We praise God for all of our first-time visitors. Thank y'all so much for worshiping with us. We love you. We love you. Sister Maldonado, bless you, bless you. It's always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure. Let's uh, do me a favor. Remember the Mitchell family in your prayers. Brother Gio, who's a member, but he was in school in Arizona. He's going to be with the Lord, so remember that family. If you know him, just remember that family. That was a couple weeks ago. Remember that family. Please continue to lift them up in your prayers. It was a good brother, faithful brother. Young brother that's been faithful. Man, when I say a great spirit, I, I coined the name for him. I just started calling him G, G Mello because he was so calm and cool. But y'all keep the Mitchell family in your prayers. Please do that for me in the name of Jesus. All right, let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Look, we need about 20-something more cars for tre treats in the trunk. And the announcement was given that you can decorate your car, but we do not want any scary decorations. The reason why we do our Praise Festival fun, because we don't want kids celebrating Halloween, going out there with, with crazy stuff. Y'all know that's the biggest witches night. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. This is a spiritual battle. So, so that's why we do that. I grew up going trick or treat, but my challenge is to do something fun that the kids can just come. So we try to ask not scary costumes and we don't want any scary decorations and all that stuff on the cars, all right? If that's what you do, then you go trick or treat. But we don't want that and we're asking you please don't do that. But if people come with it on, we don't stop them. Right, we do not stop them. They come in, they have a great time. We're just asking membership just to do that because other folk that don't hear this announcement are going to come in here like that. So don't be frowning when you see folk like that, okay? All right, let me correct that now. Let me get this right. Don't frown and say, oh, y'all can't be in here. No, we want everyone in, but I'm just saying for the cars and for us internally, let's just do, do what, what the whole purpose is, okay? Y'all good? Everybody's great? All right, the month is just about over. My birthday was October the 2nd. I celebrate all the way to the 31st. So if you have forgotten, when you come to the Praise Festival Fund, just bring my gift to the Praise Festival Fund the last day. That's next Sunday. Brother Johnson, don't be looking at me sideways. He's looking like, what, Pastor? <laughs> no, I celebrate all month long, all right? <laughs> he looked at me like, oh. So if you forgot, I'm going to give you an opportunity because I don't want you to miss out on your blessing. I'm decreeing that, <laughs> watch this. God, I decree that you bless them. If they bless me, no, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. All right, let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Eternal God, we thank you for what our ears have heard, eyes have seen. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for being a keeper of your promise. And God, we just speak right now what you have already spoken that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth in the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, Chronicles, 20th chapter, King Jehoshaphat and Judah and Jerusalem. Thank you for your keeping power. And God, I speak over your people. I speak a spirit of faith. Faith. And I speak that they always are cognizant of taking their faith position physically spiritually and mentally and God I speak it over this church that we are a people of faith that's about kingdom building and understanding whatever we do for Christ will last so we thank you we praise you I speak your blessings over those watching over those in person or over those that may watch the recording continue to keep them in perfect peace now may the grace of God the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about each and every one of our hearts and forth now and 
forevermore. And God, I speak right now as we continue to be faithful givers as a church, that this is a debt-free church and, you, and your people are debt-free people, that we may do greater things for the kingdom of God. Somebody in the building say, be it done unto me. Now decree it. It is done unto me. Now solidify in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Make sure our visitors are loved all the way through to the parking lot. Amen, amen. Get an opportunity. Please come talk to me. Give me a fist bump or something. God bless you.